Welcome back to the Friday Show Podcast, the show where you feel like your retarded friend just got freedom of speech and he doesn't know how to act, where I just say everything and anything that comes to mind and you just sit there and you take it. You take the dumb shit that I say because, you know what, it's better than silence. Sometimes stupidity is better than silence. Today, we are smoking on that Kamala pack. Everything that I say is financial advice. Mmm. Taking a sip of my little gay tea, a little matcha tea. We can say gay and retarded now. We can say gay and retarded. I mean, we're always saying gay and retarded, but we're saying it louder. We're saying it with our chest, and we're standing on business. When I say business, we're all unemployed. We don't have any kind of business. But we're acting like it, and that's good enough. How's everybody doing? Hey, man. Trump won. He did it. The tea dog t Dog got it. Honestly, I never thought Kamala was going to win that. That was uh, every interview I saw of her. She, it was, it was, she was bound to lose. She was bound to lose. When she refused to go on the Joe Rogan podcast, when she refused to go on the Joe Rogan podcast, that's when I knew it was like she's not going to make it. She needed the Joe Rogies. She needed the Rogies, man. She needed the Rogue Dog. She needed the Road Dog. She needed that raw dog, but she uh, refused. She refused to go because she wanted to do, don't notify me, phone, how dare you. I'm recording a very important podcast that 20 people are listening to. Now, nah, but um, yeah, her not wanting to do that interview, it's not a good look. She wanted to do a scripted interview for an hour when uh, our dog was just... Just going, hey, how, well, how about we just have a conversation? We just, the American people get to know you a little bit. And she was like, I can't let them know me. If they know me, they'll never vote for me. And that's what happened. Nobody voted. This is why I'm, I got my little American, uh, American little washcloth or little towel. You know what's funny? My ex's mom gave me this towel. I'm not even American. I'm not, see? I'm not even American, but she uh, gave me this towel. I just think uh, U.S. politics is very entertaining. It's super entertaining. I uh, scrolled on Twitter and I saw like 40 women just crying and posting videos on TikTok. One of them was like, my boyfriend is in the living room watching the election results and I'm in the bathroom crying. I can't believe I will not have rights to my body. And I'm like, First of all, it's not an atomic bomb being dropped on your head. Everybody relax. Everybody relax. It's not that deep. It is. It kind of is. It kind of is that deep when you consider the fact that people aren't going to be... I mean, less money is being funneled to Ukraine. That's that's pretty good. Less bombs being dropped. Maybe they're going to be in talks of a truce or just a complete end to the war. That'd be good, right? That would be pretty good. That'd be pretty good, right? That there's no more Ukraine war. I saw that Zelensky, upon Trump getting elected president, immediately congratulated him on winning the presidency. And uh, it's, it's because he knows he's cooked. He was like, oh, fuck. I have to say congrats because if I don't, if I make him feel like I didn't want him to win, which I clearly didn't because he's not going to send us any money, he might stop sending me money. And he will stop sending you money. Whether you congratulate him or not, Zelensky, you're cooked. You're cooked. You're going to be homeless. You're going to be homeless. Everybody's going to be homeless. No more laundering money with these defense contracts. It's over. Boeing, Raytheon, Lockheed, you're cooked. You're absolutely cooked. I just want them, I don't want them to make money. I don't want these companies. They've made, they've made their four years of just mm, banging contracts, banging government contracts, contract after contract, send another missile, send another 40 javelins, fuck it. Some more Moabs, let's go. For, for what? How long has the war in Ukraine been going on? Two years? For just two years of, mm, let's go, long range missiles. Let's, let's, let's attack deep into Russia. Deep. Deep into Russian territory with Western weapons. Let's escalate the war. 
the closer we can get to escalation without actually going to atomic and nuclear, the more money we make. It's like closing in on the event horizon of a black hole. If you just stay like, you can travel time. You can go into the fucking future with all this time dilation and money. But as soon as you get sucked into t the event horizon, you just spaghettified. You're cooked. But if we just get closer and they get greedy, they get so greedy. They're just like, oh, we got to get closer. Time is damn near stopping by that time. If we just get so close, half of the ship is inside of the event horizon, half of it outside of it. Just right on the fucking line, right on the line. We can stop time. We can make so much money that time stops. Perfect analogy. Black hole, Ukraine war. Same thing. So yeah, that's going to probably uh, come to a halt. That's probably going to come to a halt because Trump has not been a fan of sending other countries money. I feel him. I feel him. It's like he has a baby mama. And he keeps sending him money. She's like, I got to take him to get a haircut. I got to take this kid to do this. I got to take him to fight Six Flags. I got to take him to... Don't do all these activities with my son. Don't do it. Don't do all these activities with my anti-tank missiles. You don't need to do all these things. I want to keep my anti-tank missiles at home. That's why I want to keep them. Stop. Stop taking my son, aka Abram Tanks... Into Russian territory. I'll do that if I decide to do that. And then Ukraine's like, I need a hair appointment. I have a nail appointment. I have to I have to pay these oligarchs. There's gotta be some sort of corruption going on there. There's there's no way along the ladders of bureaucracy in Ukraine, the corrupt bureaucracy, that they're not just, oh, a forty million eight hundred million contract. Let me just skim ten percent off the top of that. Before I send it to the next guy. That's not happening. That's not happening. Oh, they're getting reasonable wages. We don't even know what's going on in there. We don't even know how their government and contracts and military and their bureaucracy works. But we are all trusting that they're getting a reasonable salary. They're not. They're definitely. Yeah, they're definitely not taking two million, four million off the top of that. Surely they're not. It's all just going to defending the Ukrainian people. Gotta be. Come on, man. But you know what? I don't like sitting here and just say, stating the obvious. We all know that's happening. We all know that's happening. And um, it, was, it was just funny. It was just funny to see everybody just having a meltdown about Ukraine. But what does that mean for... Israel, does that mean that more money will just be funneled to Israel? It's like, hey, we're not actually thinking about reducing costs. We're just going to reroute it to Israel so that they can bomb Hamas and Hezbollah and uh, the Houthis. There's so many, there's so many uh, organizations, so to say, that they're fighting Israel. Three different organizations, proxies. Iran. I'm not going to lie. I don't like Iran. I don't like Iran. I feel like they're a very sneaky state. It's a very sneaky state. I don't like what they're doing with Iraq. I don't like how they made Iraq depend. I don't like their influence in the region, to be honest with you. Remember remember when Iran just uh, killed that woman for not wearing a hijab? That was pretty bad. That was That's pretty bad of the government to allow such things, no? Or did we just forget that? Now I don't I don't like Iran because uh they've constantly tried to influence the Middle Eastern region, making Iraq depending on them. I don't like that. I don't like when you mess with Iraq because they've dealt with enough. Let's be honest. They a million people just got invaded for no reason. Well, they got invaded for a couple of reasons. Saddam was tripping. But you know, you could have taken Saddam out without doing all that other shit, you know? Controlling Middle Eastern oil. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just influence over the region that they're going to war for. But anyways, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Trump winning uh, the election. That was, uh, is he the first president to win two non-consecutive terms? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let me actually look it up. Was Trump dog? 
uh, is Trump the first president to win non consecutive let's see um oh will donald trump do it for the first time will he be the first president ever to win two non-consecutive terms no he's the second u.s president the first one was uh let's see grover cleveland served as the 22nd president after the 1884 election and as the 24th president after the campaign in 19, 1892. Oh, wow, he's only the second one to do it. Wow. There's only 13 presidents that have, uh, that have served consecutive terms. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, Andrew Jackson, Ulysses S. Grant, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, Dwight Eisenhower, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama. Obama. Big Obama energy. I don't even know what that means. Uh, but what does this mean for uh, America to have uh, Trump? I mean, he got Elon Musk on that um, efficiency commission. That's going to be interesting, having an efficiency commission. Because it's true, they have a lot of shit going on there. Um, Hong Kong is hitting me up right now. They're telling me to stop talking about Trump. They're not happy. China is not happy about it. China is not happy about Trump being in office because that means resources are probably going to be right di directed to Taiwan, and that's not that's not good for them. Um, but Elon Musk being uh, head of the efficiency commission that they're making probably going to make a lot of sense honestly i i do feel like a lot of people have jobs and do things that are just completely unnecessary in the government i feel like there's a lot of things in the government that just i feel like dead people are getting paid a salary without people are people you know keeping track of anything i don't feel like people are really keeping track of the spendings that the U.S. government does. So there's no way it should be spending as much money that it is. The only reason it's spending so much money is because it's making so much fucking money. I mean, the GDP of the United States is insane. It's an insane GDP. But all that money is like, where is this going? It's, it can't all go to war and military. And you look at the government and you're like, why is so much money just going to waste over here? And it's like 12 employees to finish one task, basically. Very inefficient. I mean, when you, whenever you have a big corporation, that just happens. You just have a bunch of people that are inefficient and barely doing their job. And they're getting paid handsomely because they, they've been at the company for a long time. They're at the head of it. They like the employees. But even though it might not be, I mean, that's what it, that's the whole like counter argument of, communism isn't it if it, everything is government owned it doesn't have any competition it doesn't feel the need to compete therefore making it less efficient less innovation less push towards something when you don't have competition that's basically uh, like one of the main pointers of one of the main point, pointers against communism but the fact is that you are actually in competition with other countries. That's what it is. But when you're so dominant, you have such a monopoly, you're just like, oh, fuck. I mean, look at Twitter. He fired like 80% of the workers because they're like, you guys are not doing anything, actually. So whenever something grows into something really big, whether it's a company or a government, you just have a lot of inefficiency everywhere. So that's going to be interesting. Cut spending. And what does that mean for the American people to cut spending and reducing the deficit? I'm going to be completely honest with you. I have no idea. I have no idea what any of this means. You are listening to an idiot right now. But it's, you know, I would like to see the results. I would like to see a better economy because it affects the whole world. I mean, I don't have a choice. I'm not in China or Russia, so I kind of want the West to win. 
my hands are tied over here. Of course, I'm going to want the West to not collapse. It's in my best interest, whether I agree with it or not. Having a country is probably better than just nomad wasteland. Probably. I mean, not that I wouldn't do well in a nomad wasteland. I would just, I would just have to know like a a car mechanic. That's all you need to know. If if all if it all goes to shit, just know a really good real car mechanic, and just become the diesel and gasoline siphoner. Like that's my job. That would be my job in a wasteland, just nuclear wasteland. I would get to know all the car mechanics. Because you need cars, you need vehicles to get around. And I would just be the guy that siphons gasoline. That's pause. That's kind of that. It, that's not to not to say that I'm good at sucking or anything. I'm just saying, like, I don't know how to work cars, but I feel like I do a good job in running out with a little jerry tank. And then, you know, just siphon fuel for the vehicles. That that is the because at that point you were like okay, how are you, how are you benefiting our community of car mechanics? And I'd be like, I'll get gas. I can't build a car. I'll just get gas. And they're like, all right, well we're gonna need gas. It's not like like I'm gonna steal solar panels. Nobody's gonna. Nobody's gonna have electric cars. Come on. It's all diesel trucks. That's what it's gonna be. Although electric cars would be sneaky, uh, you know, you just raid uh, uh, another community, another village at night with an electric car. You just sneak attack them, I guess. That's not, okay. Whatever. Moving on. Um, that also means, Trump winning, that uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is going to have control of the public health agencies such as FDA and NIH. Um, the FDA has, uh, been a very bad, very bad agency because they have approved a bunch of shit that isn't allowed in Europe. Why? Because, well, they kind of depend on the fees. I think the FDA makes most of their money from the fees that companies pay to have something approved so that's their business that's most of their money that's where most of their money coming from i believe let me fact check that uh so i'm not spewing crazy shit right now fda main uh sore Uh, why is the FDA funded in part by the companies it regulates? With the fact the FDA moved from a fully taxpayer-funded entity to one funded through tax dollars and new prescription drug users' fees. Um, okay, so program funding the remaining 45 percent of it or 2.7 billion dollars is paid for by industry user fees the fda uh, budget is equivalent to uh 9.95 dollars per american per year okay so they get 2.7 billion dollars from fees that's like half of their almost half their money just coming from fees and you know to have returning customers you kind of be like okay we're just gonna approve shit Every time you approve for a new food coloring, and there's like a spectrum of colors. So you just be like, oh, you want red 40? Approve it for $40,000. Approve the next thing for, and it's just infinite amount of colors. It's a spectrum. You just choose a new food coloring. It's like, oh, it's a new ingredient. New ingredient in that? You're going to have to apply. Pay the fee. We're going to approve it. You're going to make a lot of money as soon as we approve it, but we're going to need you to pay the fee for us to approve it. So how th that's how they're making their money, but you know, regulating that is probably going to be a good idea. You probably don't want Red Forty and Gatorade. You probably don't want, I don't know, uh, corn. What what is it called? Fruit high fructose corn syrup in Arizona iced tea, creating a lot of visceral fat in the American population. That's not even allowed in in Sweden. It's not allowed in Europe. It's not allowed Norway, UK. It's not. 
because it's bad. It's considered bad. So, you know, healthier. And it's probably, it's probably going to, you know, Intel, it's probably going to mean less money going towards the healthcare systems and the drug companies because you have a healthier population, making sure that they're not eating bullshit. It's probably going to be good for the economy. I don't know. I don't know. This might all be lies. I don't know. Remember, we're dealing with politicians at the end of the day. Don't get sucked into this whole fucking politician shit. They're all, I mean, they're famous, notorious for not being honest and honestly just being self-serving. You, us falling into the trap of where you like, this time it might actually, that's every time. Every time you go, oh, this time it might be, that's for... 4,000 years. I don't know how long democracy has been going on, but for 4,000 years minimum, every time it's been like, this time is actually different because these, these, and these, and it's every time it's like, no. No. Oh, it's different this time. We have to protect America because, because the terrorists, they flew into the towers. And then you just go into a war with a country that had nothing to do with it. And you're like, oh, it wasn't the time. We really thought this time that it was the time that they were being honest with the whole weapons of mass destruction. And then there wasn't. So they got you. They get you. They get you every time. And I don't want to be that one, that one, that adult, that fully grown adult that knew the bullshit as a kid and then grew up and actually bought into it. I don't be that. I don't want to be that idiot. So now who knows? Who knows? But a lot of people are saying that this might be the time. So I, <laughs> I might believe. I want to believe. I want to believe. That's what it is. Uh, but that's that's you know politicians. They're just playing into that na naivete. They're, they're treating you, treating you like treating you. They're treating you like a side chick, just throwing you crumbs of that there might be a relationship going on here. And I fall for it. Sometimes I pick up the crumbs. It's like, oh my god, they do love me. They do want to spend their lives inside. This is just not the time. But they're going to propose at some point. We're going to get health care. And it's like, dude. That motherfucker is hustling. He's trying to get to the bag. Can't deal with you right now. You crazy? Shout out to T, man. Shout out to T. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's going to be interesting. Just having 80% of government being fired. I wonder how long before CIA is just like, I don't, we can't put up with this shit. Shoot this motherfucker, bro. Shoot this motherfucker. Remember that when they had, that's just what they have, what happens when you have Catholics in the cabinet. JD Vance is Catholic. The, the, the president, the vice president. So that's. Pretty cool. We got Catholic Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Catholic. We got Catholic in the house again. Come on. Round of applause for Catholic. You know, somos catolicos. We're all Catholic over here. So I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know what that means for the country. What, what is that? It's not going to help me anyway. Remember, I'm not American. Um, but it's cool. Represent it turns out representation does matter. It does make me feel better. I understand why they wanted Kamala. I understand why the why black women and Indians wanted Kamala in office because they're like, hey, it's kind of cool to have us. And then the whole time I was like, vote for policies, not the politicians. And then the politician is Catholic. I'm like, it's pretty rad. That's pretty fucking cool. We have Catholics in there. Fucking Catholics back in the house, man. We're getting up in there again. We're doing it. We're doing it again. You know, a lot of people talk about, oh, what happens if you, uh, if that president is unfit to serve by, you know, whatever happens to them, you have a vice president to, you know, replace them, take their place. But what happens if somebody just assassinates the vice president? What, then what? What do you do then? Do you just get a new vice president? Or they're like, well, he was there for backup reason. At least they got him and not the main guy. Do they just like try to raw dog it, kind of? Just be like, fuck it, we'll just go without the president. Without the vice president. Or do they, they probably get a new vice president, honestly. But who would they pick then? Just someone from the cabinet? Or is that allowed? Is that allowed? Is it allowed? 
You can get any vice president. I mean, really, that's how you could instill a president in office indirectly. You know, you make you make the president. I mean, you mm, the vice president and then you get somebody to take his place. And then you probably get you manipulate you manipulate the president to pick a new vice president. And then when you get the president and get the vice president that you want, you just be like, yeah, we're just going to take the president out. And now we got the guy, the new vice president as president. And we just bypass the whole election. Now there's a whole new set of two people. You can probably pull it off in the span of, you know, a couple of months. But that's an insane discussion that definitely puts you on a list and shouldn't be online. And that's totally theoretical, ironic and joking. Totally kidding. Um, just a hypothetical. We're just thinking out loud. We, we, you can't think anymore. You can't think in this country. We can think. I wouldn't want that for anybody, though. Look, American flag. Come on. I wouldn't want that would stir a lot of chaos that the world doesn't need right now. We're all, you know, already war is going on. I'm just really interested about that Taiwan shit. I really, I want to see the, U, the China make a move in Taiwan. I just want to see what happens. Is it bad to kind of want the Taiwan shit to blow up a little bit? Just to see what Taiwan does in action. I'm curious to see how they would act in action. I want to see them. Because they, there are a billion of them. When was the last time we saw a country with a billion in population go to war? I want to see what that looks like. That would be historic. It's fascinating. How the fuck would that happen? What would that, an amphibian attack on a on an island that doesn't want anything to do with you? How do you how do you pull that off? You don't. You don't pull that off. You just it's a it's a very big feat. Because the, the thing is about uh, occupying a country is if they don't want you to be there, if they're not happy about it, it costs money just to maintain that occupation because there's constantly uproar and uh, resistance movements emerging. So you have to, like, get resources to your military to keep shit down. So the cost of invasion and then the cost of maintenance of an invasion is... Uh, is high. People don't think about that, but yeah, it does. It does cost money. Um, I would like to see it. I would like to see it, but for that to happen, you know, they got to pull out of Ukraine. You can't spread yourself too thin. Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. Three fronts. Come on. We learned from Germany. You don't want to do a three front war. They couldn't even handle a two front war. And they had German engineering. You know what the problem was with Germany? They didn't have access to good oil. That was their problem. They didn't have access to good, a lot of enriched oil, enriched oil. They didn't have access to a lot of oil, so they had to make lower quality oil, which means they have to use lower quality engines that are slower than the Americans and British. Because, you know, the U.S. had military military bases in Saudi Arabia since 1990, so they, they stacked up on oil, natural resources, all that. So yeah, it gives you an edge, gives you an edge. But guys, that is the episode. That is the episode. That is the Fadi Show podcast. If this is your first time listening, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed to your buddy Fadi over here talking shit. If you don't know who I am, I'm a stand-up comedian talking shit, you know, having a fun time over here. Please, if you enjoyed, drop a like. It helps tremendously. And subscribe. Subscribe to the channel so you have the every week. We drop an episode every week. And uh, as you notice, I didn't read any ads. I don't have any ad reads because, again, there's like 12 people watching. But I love them. I love everybody. And they uh, love me, hopefully. But the way you could support the channel, if you would like to, is uh, joining the Patreon. Because I'm about to record a bonus episode on the Patreon right now. So that's what we're switching over to. Uh, and that's the Fadi Show on Patreon as well. Everything is linked in the description. But either way, watching all the way through, greatly supports and greatly appreciated and uh yeah thank you guys so much for listening and i will see you guys next week hopefully some more interesting shit will have happened all right switching over to the patreon thank you guys so much for listening have a good one stay safe be easy all right peace out bye bye <laughs>